Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and I wanted to give you just a very quick live video today. Um, I have my whole family in town. My four kids are here and everyone's hustling and bustling downstairs, but I wanted to sneak up here to give you a quick tip. So a lot of you may have uh, live poinsettias at your house from the holiday. And I wanted to let you know that a lot of times people wind up overwatering their poinsettias because they don't realize that they don't need that much water. So poinsettias actually are kind of like a, almost like a tropical plant, like they're found in a lot of regions or, you know, they, they originated from a lot of regions that are very arid. So they don't need that much water. Uh, the issue comes into play when you start seeing like the, the, um, the, the petals and the leaves, they start to kind of curl up and they look as if they are dehydrated and need water. Uh, but sometimes that's just a sign that they have too much water. So uh, your best bet is to kind of poke your finger into the soil. And you can tell right here um, that, you know, I'm guilty of overwatering too, because I've been overwatering this guy. And take a look at some of these leaves. So it looks very curled up, very almost like a brownish. And what I did was, you know, I kept watering it. And then I remembered that you're not supposed to water them that much. And I've actually made, uh, you know, like a, a pretty, I don't know, like a, a pretty comprehensive video on it. I have it in like one of my you know, uh, uploaded videos, you could check it out. So I kind of knew this trick, uh, but in the hustle and bustle of the holidays, I would pass by this plant and I would see the leaves looking like this and I would give it a quick shot of water and go on with my day, forgetting that I was probably making the matter worse because I kept adding more water and then more leaves kept falling off. And I was like, why do these leaves keep falling off? Why do I have more and more when I water them? And then I realized that I was overwatering it. So a really um, quick rule of thumb when you're taking care of your poinsettia plants is to just kind of reach in here and feel the soil. If the soil feels like it's, you know, moist, a little bit damp, leave it alone. Um, and it's okay to let it just, you know, dry out even more than most soil that, that you know, because I, I like to use that rule of thumb with most of my plants. Like if it feels moist, leave it alone. Um, uh, you know, and if it feels dry, then definitely give it a shot of water, but I would let the soil dry out even more. So kind of, you know, you can kind of poke around if the top of it, you know, feels like it's uh, like a little bit dry, but you go down a little bit and there seems to be a lot of moisture there, then I would probably still leave it alone. But if, if you dig down to about like an inch and then it's still super dry, then I would give it water. I think I water mine about uh, once a week. And another thing to keep in mind is, you know, it needs to be in sunlight. A lot of times people would decorate their homes. I know that I had like one or two poinsettias in uh, one of my bathrooms because it looks so pretty for when guests came, but they're, they weren't near any windows. So, um, so they weren't getting, you know, any kind of sunlight. Hi, Rich. Thanks for checking in. Oh, guys, let me know where you're from. I love seeing where you guys are from each week. Let me know what the weather's like. Uh, right now, it is really wacky weather here in New Jersey. We're planting zone six. And we're going to have temps up to 63 degrees this weekend, I just saw, which is so wacky. All of my hydrangeas are starting to like burst open with the, well, they're starting to like kind of bud out with those uh, new buds for next year. So I got to start, you know, taking care of um, some of those hydrangeas because it's just wacky, wacky weather. Uh, so let me know where you're from. I love when you guys check in, um, but make sure that you put your poinsettia in front of, you know, sunlight because they love sun, but don't put it too close to cold windows because I think that what might've happened here is I had it next to like a really, really, you know, like a, like a window when it did get cold because the temperatures did go down to like the 30s and the 20s. And if these, if they're like pushing up, it's, if the plant's pushing up against the window, it's going to wind up getting like some sort of like freezer burn. Hey guys, hey Dan, hey Daniel from Los Angeles, California. Oh wow, must be nice by you. Uh, Northern Joyce from North Texas, super, wow. Uh, <laughs> your hostas were growing, wow. I bet, I bet everything's kind of bursting up. So um, I wanna tell you also guys, when you get plants as gifts, I got this really beautiful, beautiful plant as a gift uh, and I absolutely love it. Hey Jerry Lynn, thanks for checking in from Washington State. Uh, oh, it's the 20s, high snow, wow, it's snowing. Oh, the, the 20s are your high? Wow, that's super cold by you. But this is a beautiful plant. Uh, the problem is I had it too close to one of my windows and you can see I kind of got like some burning. I have to move it away from those cold winters. Um, yeah, any advice on the budding hydrangeas? So I made you guys a video. I have, I think it might be in my live collection showing you that if you have um, hydrangeas that are starting to bud out and you know that you have cold temperatures coming, you might want to wrap them with a little bit of burlap. And I show you exactly how to do that. Other people will put like some chicken wire around them and they will just kind of fill 
uh, you know, the inside of the chicken wire with some loose leaves. Now you don't have to worry about your hydrangeas that come in on uh, new growth if it's starting, it's probably not even gonna start to bud out if it's coming in, if it's like a, a limelight or an Annabelle, those usually don't bud out until spring anyway. But if you have like an Endless Summer or a Nico that comes in on old wood, chances are those guys are gonna start to bud out now if temperatures spiked and they got really, really warm by you. But be careful, like by me, I'm not gonna wrap my hydrangeas uh, this weekend, because I know temperatures are, are going to be wacky again, and they're going to go up to 63 degrees. So if I were to wrap my hydrangeas in an attempt to protect them from like a cold spell, and then it got really, really hot, I'm going to wind up cooking them. So I don't want to cook my hydrangeas. I'm going to hold off on wrapping them until I know the temperatures are going to stay super, super cold. But you can check out some of those uh, past videos that I made showing you exactly how to do that. Uh, Rich, it's been up and down there too. 32 right now, but around 50. Yeah, I know. This is like such, this is like the craziest um, weather year I ever remember in the garden. So I'm just curious what's going on by you guys. Uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, so I'm, this is like just a super quick one, but I wanted to let you know also that this beautiful gift that I got, I love this, but a lot of these gifted plants that you may receive, I want you to, to take note that a lot of them don't have holes on the bottom. So they're really beautiful and they're gorgeous as a gift, but you have to make sure that you wind up putting these plants, repot them in a place that has, you know, in a pot that has like drainage on the bottom. Otherwise, as you're watering this plant, the excess water is going to build up on the bottom and it's gonna give you soggy roots and then your plant may die because it has like soggy roots. So you have a couple different options. If you like the container that it came in, like I love this container, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the plant up I'm going to add a whole bunch of pebbles, like just some gravel, some pebbles to the bottom, and then I'm gonna you know, put the plant with the soil back on top. And what's gonna happen is every time I water this plant, you know, the water's gonna drain through, and then it's gonna hit the soil, and then it's gonna wind up leaving the soil and going through like the gravel, and then the gravel and the rocks will wind up like trapping that water, and then I don't have to worry about the roots sitting in that soggy water and getting root rot. Um, this is, this is the hellebore. So believe it or not, this plant normally uh, comes into play in like February in my garden. It's one of the first uh, flowers that usually bloom. So the other thing that you have to consider, this plant was given to me about a month ago. So in um, planting zones six, this isn't like the normal time of year that this plant usually comes into bloom. So my thought is it was probably grown uh, by like a specialty, like greenhouse, like, you know, the, some flowers are just grown as specialty gifts. And what happens is uh, they're grown with, you know, special lights and, and you know, they have the, the people that grow them, grow them because they know that they're gonna be gifted, you know, during Christmas. Sometimes you'll see like hydrangeas in Easter, like around Easter time. And, you know, in, in like March, most hydrangeas aren't in bloom in this neck of the woods, but if you go to like ShopRite or your florist, there'll be a ton of beautiful hydrangeas. And those were also grown in special like greenhouse conditions. Now, the thing is when you try to put either like this, you know, like December blooming hellebore or your, you know, March gifted hydrangeas in the ground, they're usually not that uh, strong because, you know, they were like babied. They were babied and they had special lights, you know, helping them to grow. So a lot of times these guys, when you replant them in your garden, won't do as well as like the hardy, you know, like the regular ones. Uh, but you can give it a shot or you can just, you know, keep it in the pot and keep it as a house plant. And then chances are it's going to do better because once again, it's, it's pretty much used to being babied. So uh, that's the story with some of these uh, plants for today. Sorry it's so short, guys, but I want to get back to my, my little crew downstairs. I'm so happy everybody's home and the kids are going to start leaving soon. But I wanted to check and wish you all a happy holiday. And uh, I will see you guys next week. And I'll, I'll try to come up with some, uh, you know, great hydrangea tips for you guys with this warm weather. And I'll, I'll let you know what's going on here with some of the steps that I'm doing. I'll, I'll kind of walk around the farm and uh, give you some tips on what we're, we're taking care of business over here. So thanks again for checking in. I appreciate it. Hey, Linda from Spring Valley near San Diego. Oh, I bet it's warm by you guys. Um, yeah, but I love seeing where you guys are from all over the world. And please hop on over to my Kelly Lehman Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's like thousands and thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're swapping out uh, great gardening tips there. So they're posting pictures of their own beautiful gardens and they're also like giving great garden advice. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys one more thing, guys. I got this really cute bird feeder from Amazon and um, the birds come here like in the morning and it's just amazing. It's, it's held on with suction cups 
and this is like my bedroom window and I've got this family of blue jays that shows up in the morning and it's just spectacular. So if you've ever, uh, if you're really into birds, you can try to find one of these. I got this one on Amazon and you can kind of just attach it right to your window. That's kind of fun to watch. And uh, oh, happy new year, Jerry. Thank you for that. Happy new year, everybody. Oh my gosh, I can't believe the new year's coming up in just two days. That's so crazy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Alina Torres from uh, Los Angeles. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you for your kind comment. I always appreciate the kind comment, guys. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It just helps my algorithm. And um, the Cake Pop Sisters hey, from Toronto. Hey, guys, thanks for checking in. I love to see you guys here. Thank you so much for the loyalty. I love seeing, uh, you know, these similar uh, names every week. It's so fun. And please also join us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. And we're also on TikTok now under Kelly Lehman's Flowers. And Pinterest, I've got a gazillion Pinterest boards up, guys, with loads and loads of gardening ideas there. So check it out. It's under Cranberry Fields. That's my Pinterest page. And listen, I will see you guys in the next video.